to attack the same person. Isn't that cool? <laughs> Do you like the rhino? It's a neat looking rhino. Looking for kids, eight and up. Oh, cool. Look, he's turning around, Ray. And they have the Haunted Swamp of Terror and 3D. Here, let's go check out who's uh, making those funny What are you looking at? Look. Look at Ray. Look, he's happy. Michael, look at that one. Michael, you're not looking. Look at him. All right, folks, welcome and good morning. My name is Kevin. I'm one of the primate keepers here at Lowry Park Zoo. And as usual, I'm having a little trouble with my microphone. And what we're going to do here today is we're going to give out a little bit of a treat for our chimpanzees. Actually, they are being a lot more quiet than they usually are. Once they see the treats themselves, they usually go berserk and they start screaming and yelling and having a great time because they know the goodies are coming. Sorry about that. So today it's a little bit quieter. It's a rainy day. It's kind of cool. So they're all relaxing. But as I mentioned, I was doing a little experiment when I came out. Most of the time when we come out and do this talk, I roll the little speaker out and I've got my treats, whatever they may be, under my arm. And as I come across, they see me and they go crazy and they go nuts. Okay. So I was checking today to see okay. just how smart they were. If it was that they really kind of had an idea of what time it was. And when they saw me, they knew it was goody time. Because I tell you that this morning I walked past this exhibit six or seven times and not a peep comes out of them. But right around eat cupcakes and candy and ice cream all the time. But if you eat a nice healthy dessert, you might get lucky and get some of those things. It works the same way for these guys. If we fed them this kind of food all day long, they get, well, fatter than they are already. Let's put it that way. Um, most of them are in good shape. A few of them aren't hurting for uh, their food, that's for sure. But we didn't just go out over here today and toss these goodies out for them and watch them eat. That would be feeding them, and that wouldn't be what we're going for today. Our treat is a little different. The reason that they're in these tennis balls is because we had a couple visitors point out they are very smart. Now, in order to make sure that they're happy in captivity, we have a very important job, and that is to make sure they're using their brains as much as their bodies. And why is that? Well, take a look at these chimpanzees. You can see them looking across the exhibit at us, and you can almost feel oh, the intelligence as they're thinking, look, what watching us. Now, out in the wild, we find chimpanzees in Central the Africa. The they spend a lot of their time traveling in large groups. And what do you do when you travel around and you're out in the wild? You're looking for food. You have to have stuff to eat. Our opportunists, they're what we call omnivores. If you don't know what that word is, just remember that we are all omnivores. And what that means is we'll eat just about anything that comes our way. And that's what we're designed to do. But for the most part, they like to eat ripe, juicy fruits when they can find them. Now, let's transplant them from the wild and let's take a captive population. It's a little bit different, is it? They don't have all the time. And what do you do? You have nothing to do now because you found all your food. Well, what happens to you guys when you have nothing to do? What happens? You get bored, right? Yeah, we have the same problem, you know? Way back thousands of years ago, we had to go hunt and gather all of our food. Now, how long does it take us? All right, well, personalities. And I also would like to point out that this task is recommended only for zookeepers. <laughs> because as much as they may know and like me, if I fell over the edge here, I'd be in big trouble. And I'll explain that in a minute. 
Kind of All right, well, there's everybody. There are six of them on the exhibit. Standing up front and center with his arm outstretched, that's Herman. Herman is 39 years old, and oh, he's got a good <laughs> arm there, good hand. He, he is what we watch. call the watch dominant male it. of the group. He's the king. <laughs> if we had a crown, we'd give him one. Next up, we'll have Jamie on the left. She might be hard to see behind me here. Not quite as good at catching, as you can see. <laughs> Herman's really the only gifted one we have. She's an adult female in her mid to late 20s. Now there's, uh, let's see here. We have <laughs> Herman, of course. He's very generous, as you can see. Yeah. Next we have Jamie's sister, Twiggy. She is one of the larger ones strolling over by her sister right now uh. and trying to take her sister's ball. Oh. All right, Herman, you're going to have to wait. And here's the problem we're going to have, is that when Herman wants a little bit more than his share, you may see a little bit of aggression. So I'm just warning everybody before we move on with this. Uh, let's see how many I've got left. i got four, and I've got that's too many chips. All right. I'm going to toss one over to Twiggy there and see what happens as Herman's going to run after it and drop his in the process. Oh, Alex, there's no way you're going to catch this. Oh. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, look at the baby. Good hey, job. That good. little guy is Alex. I'm sorry about the delay there. I had to get it to him pretty quick before Herman made his way back. <laughs> now one thing you don't need to worry about is Twiggy is one of the few chimps who doesn't mind climbing down into the moat and getting stuff out of the little pool. So she'll probably pick up her, the ball that Herman dropped on her own. So we've met. Okay, Jamie on the left. Twiggy's next. And we have Herman in the middle. Alex, the little guy up there. Bamboo on the far right. Herman is very greedy. <laughs> now, way up in the tree, we have one we haven't introduced yet. Her name is Rukia. She's an adult female. Typically, she will come down to the rocks so that she can get her treat. But then she'll take the treat and run up the tree with it because she knows that Herman won't follow her up there to try to take it away. Today, doesn't seem like the treat is all that exciting for her. So she's staying up there. So what we might do is try to toss it to her, see if she wants to catch it, and if not, all the more for Herman, right? <laughs> yeah, you think so, huh? Let's see how good my arm is. Rukia, you have any interest? Look up over here. Rukia. Ru, here we go. You ready? No, she's not even looking over here. All right, let's try it anyway. Here you go. Oh, that was a good shot. <laughs> that was a good try. But maybe now that we made the tent, no, no, she's going to pow it in the back there. All right, no worries. Now last and certainly not least, this guy's shaking back over here, <laughs> and Herman, of course. This guy's bamboo, and he is the oldest guy on the exhibit. Uh. <laughs> bamboo is 41. Uh. That, however, does not mean that he is in charge. Just because he's older doesn't necessarily mean that he's the king. That belongs to Herman. All right, now what you're going to see with bamboo, and I don't want anybody to be sad or anything, but I'm going to throw this to him, and he's going to look at it as if it doesn't exist. You ready? Uh. Here you go, boo. Do, 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 do. Right over his head. There you go. I know. It, it does seem kind of sad, and in a way it is. Bamboo has a, a bit of a story to him. He came to us just about two years ago from Bush Gardens, just down the street from us. You may be familiar with that place. A lot of fun to go. Well, he lived in a group that had a bunch of adult females that did not like him very much. Bamboo, unfortunately, is very passive for an adult male chimp. So they would beat him up all Aww. the time. He would have to sit in the corner of the exhibit and he'd be very lucky to get any food out there at all. Aww. Not a very fun, happy life, is it? So, eventually we decided he needs a happy retirement. He's an old guy after all, he's had a tough life. Why don't we try bringing him over to Lowry Park Zoo and see just how well he does with our much more passive group as far as chimpanzees go. So that's what we did. And it turned out, at the beginning, it was rough, like most introductions can be. It's a stranger. They don't know what to make of him. But after time, as you can see, he's very well integrated into the group. He gets along very well.
Anyway, sorry. Wait, no, you have to, Michael, get back over and smile and stand there. So. Michael. I like the baby one, isn't that cute? Uh -huh. and so, Did you see them on um, Thornberry? Oh, that's like so wild. Wild Thornberry's in Powerpuff Girls. In Power Beer. Yeah. Don't, don't you say that. Mm. They're cute. Yeah, they're There you go, you just like them. There you go, just like the buffalo. They grunt and they snort and they stomp. And usually three or four pups are born in March or April. In contrast with the great wolf behavior of communal care for the pups existed in two color phases. In addition to the common color phase of the red wolves in our exhibit, a black color phase existed and was commonly found throughout Florida. When human development significantly decreased its habitat, causing prey to become scarce, red wolves initially turned to livestock for food. In an effort to protect this livestock, federal predator control programs were instituted. Under these programs, 50,000 red wolves were killed between 1932 and 1964. That gets too small. That's alright. Okay, that was fun!